Coming up on the program, our garden is full. We'll show you what we've got growing that is good and some is not good. And we're going to save some of the turnip seeds that we let go from last fall. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sioux Growing Supply Dot com. Stop before you dig. Call Diggers Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Diggers Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com. Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors. Simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors. HappyLeafLED.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We're going to take a look at what we've got growing in our garden. We've got about 1,800 square feet here. We've got it very full, almost, I think, to capacity. So we're going to show you what we've got growing the good and the bad. Let's first start with the onions that is in the technically front yard. So we'll start at the high end or what we call the high end of the garden where we have our bulbing onions in our art of the garden raised bed that we've got filled with Sioux growing supply. We've got purple onions and white Spanish onions. I think we've got some yellow Spanish onions. But the size that these are, we're almost at tennis ball size for that particular purple onion there good loose soil. We've never ever had onions like this and we contribute it to growing them in raised beds with loose soil and enriched soil. So we're very happy and we'll continue this practice. Next year we'll revitalize this soil and we'll grow them again in the same type of situation. Then we have our strawberry patch. It's about 150 square feet and there's a lot of milkweed in here and there's a lot of weeds. Now this patch is about seven years old and it's decreased in productivity by 50% from last year. So what we will have to determine, and this will probably be a later in fall type of project, is basically where I'm here up to the fence there, we'll work this bed completely uh, to bare soil. We remove the plants that are still growing and then place them in rows and reestablish this bed and then in the spring we'll have to bring and most likely purchase more plants in order to get this cleaned up and get rows established because it used to be uh, about here and over the progression of seven years it has worked its with these June bearing strawberries with the daughter plants it has migrated almost uh, in the midst of our first grow bed here which is our tomatoes we have eight tomatoes in this particular area we do have a post with a can on it that is to increase, in, invite birds in to feed off the bird seed or old vegetable seeds that we have. And then I can also see the bad insects in the garden and like the tomato hornworm and feed off that. Up against the house we have a root maker raised bed in which we have carrots. Some of them are Many of them are doing very well. There are a few that have got stressed and are going to seed, but that's just the way it works sometimes. And then on each side, we have cocktail onions in which we started from seed that they will be harvesting here in the next couple of days. So this, where I'm standing in, is the middle of our pepper patch. Yes, it's very weedy, but I left it weedy in order to show you the contrast to some other beds in which we didn't weed, but we did a different technique on. I've got two rows of peppers. There's 23 peppers, 24 peppers here, some volunteer tomato plants, and then you can also see the strawberries here that are migrating over that at the time that we decide in the fall to do this. We'll remove all those and take them back over in the patch. But this is a very weedy patch that over the time of, you know, each week we work on a bed. And this bed is actually only about three foot wide and there's walk paths on either side. It's just we just didn't get the white plastic down like we have in this particular walk path 
that is next to our yacht cons. Right there we have four yacht cons that are planted very, very densely. It's recommended to plant yacht cons two foot apart like you would tomatoes. Well, we want to experiment and see if we can get them one foot apart to cram more yacht cons in and still have the same yield. We do have these spaced accordingly on this end, doing very, very well. And yacht cons are a South American crop that can be grown here in North America and it does very well. Uh, throughout the garden, we have containers here with tomatoes and peppers. These are uh, root maker containers that contain some tomatoes here. Our potato patch has done very well and they have flowered and we're getting close to harvest here in about two to three weeks. Very strong looking potatoes. We've had frequently rain here in our garden about every three to five days we, we have rain. So that makes a big difference and we have not hooked up our irrigation system yet. We will if necessary, but we haven't yet. Beside the house we have three 60 gallon grow bags from Rootmaker. We have onions in the first bag, we have beets in the second or the middle bag, and on the far bag there we have potatoes with intercropped with bush beans. Those are doing the best of all three beds. The beets, I'm not sure why we don't have as strong beets as I believe we should have and have had in the past, and the onions I think are greatly affected by, as you're seeing, partial shade during the middle portions of the day. Those are the same type of onions as are in the Art of the Garden bed in the front yard, so I think the partial shade is messing up the development of those onions. This bed here contains a variety of different items here. We have yacons. I've got a big cluster of yacons. We talked about how they're supposed to be spaced. These were the leftover rhizomes, so we threw them all in a container. They germinated. We threw them all in, a, uh, in the ground here. There's about 19 plants in this little area. We'll see how they turn out. I've got a normal spaced yacon there. I've got three sweet potatoes on that side. In the center, I have peppers, and on the edge here, I have tomatoes. This bed, and the reason why I didn't weed before I showed you the garden here, this bed we have done absolutely nothing to. This spring we got a late start because of the wet weather. So we came in and I laid a tarpaulin down to smother out the weeds. The weeds were about four or five inches tall on this bed. Smothered them out, didn't do nothing to that, and uh, left that way for about six weeks. Came in, removed the plastic, dug the holes for the plants, put them in the ground, done nothing. You can see we have very few weeds compared to the beds that we just saw that the peppers were in that was not covered. <laughs> that was not covered. So it gives us an idea of what can be done this fall. What we're going to attempt to do is all of these beds get covered with leaves. So the, the ideal is, and we're th what has, we believe will work, we'll cover all these beds with cardboard first, then layer leaves on top. That way that cardboard will actually act as kind of like a tarpaulin type of effect in the spring and hold some of those weeds at bay and then we'll just plant in those beds, so we'll see if that makes a difference. We have more potatoes here, doing very well from Wood Prairie Farms. We have a row of summer squash in which we started under coffee cans with uh, clear lids uh, much earlier, 30 days earlier than we, nat we would be able to put them in the ground. They're already producing, doing very well as we have some yellow straight neck squash, some green striped squash, some black beauty, uh, and other summer squash here, as well as we have Jerusalem artichokes that last summer, last fall, I went in and removed everything I saw on the ground, replanted the largest tubers, and they've come back very strong because we had so many in the ground that they were competing, they were very small, it just didn't work good, so uh, we went and revitalized that bed, and it seems to be working very well. The 4x4 raised bed has Swiss chard in it, that's from Rootmaker. We've got beets that we started in the front there, and more beets that started in the back. So we have containers that have contained beets, some peppers, radishes that have gone to seed, and two containers of rhubarb that we grow in containers. It can be done, we've had some challenges, but I think we've overcome and we know what we've done wrong with that. We've got 18 tomatoes here. We've got several dozen cucumbers of 10 different varieties on our makeshift trellis. I've got pole beans in the back. We've got a bird feeder that's hanging to inquire and invite more birds in. Sweet potatoes growing in a root maker container. These are old potatoes that were saved from last year that we planted. That's why they're a little behind and I don't know if they'll do as good. Bush beans in the front of the bed and intercropped between the potatoes is more bush beans. 
Here is 22 more tomatoes with another one in a container. This here is the lemongrass in the front of that bed. We've got a turnip plant that we've got, let go to seed that we're going to save seeds on, as well as sunflowers intermingled in this bed. And this weedy patch back here actually contains our acas, which is another root crop from South America that we have found to be the, the pinkish red kind to be incredibly sweet, almost like candy. They're related to the potato and extremely, uh, very, very less starchiness than a, a traditional tuber. Now we're up to our straw bell garden that's about two years old and this will be about the maximum of its life. The front bale is actually three years old and all of these contain butternut, spaghetti, jihardia pumpkins, tiger melons, and watermelon uh, midgets that we have planted. And the, this bed here is empty with the guidance from us to get those crops to grow this way instead of growing into other beds that we have on that side. They're all doing well. You'll see some discoloration on the Jahardia pumpkin, which means that it's just needing, um, it is in a container. We've had a lot of rain and that does pull a lot of the nutrients out of the container or any containers. And that's why you'll see uh, occasionally your containers crops get really yellow because of that continued loss of nutrients. So we have fertilized that with some sustained fertilizer, worked in the soil and it will be it'll come back you'll still have some discoloration and like this leaf here is gone but as the plant continues to grow and once this reaches the ground it will begin to put roots on and actually feed off nutrients in the ground itself back side of the garden we've got what was what, what what is our peas that we're going to remove and plant beets in they've done okay they were poor because of uh, seeds that we saved that were not sufficient to regrow they shouldn't have been planted but we were trying to save on seeds as well as the soil was very cool this spring and wet and that actually hurt the development of the what germination we had three kale here this is another another weedy bed that we're working on right here we have three okra plants brussels sprouts and cabbage so we'll see how that goes the big bed here is once it was garlic that I've removed, we've weeded, it looks very pretty. I've neutralized a uh, nutrient, filled the soil with sustained fertilizer and two growing supply compost. And this is all bush beans. And in about 40 to 60 days, we'll be harvesting bush beans. And at this point of the stage here, I'll be able to control the weeds very easily. These seeds will come up in about four days and I'll be able to control the weeds and remove what weeds we have. I went in here, I uh, removed them very thoroughly. This here, we've got 18 tomatoes in this bed that we will per create a Florida weave with to get them up and off the ground so we have full production. This bed here, we've got uh, Hamburg parsley root that has finally germinated. We're still trying to get the parsnips to germinate. We'll have to replant again on that. Parsnips can be very fidgety with the germination. Here we have leeks back here in this weedy patch. We have celery and shallots. Shallots are back here. Celery has done very, very well on that. Now, the reason why our gardens are more weedier than maybe yours are, there's a couple of reasons. One, it's native soil. Two, we've gotten, we've been notified by several gardeners in the, uh, via social media that their gardens are extremely weedy as well. Well, that has a lot to do with moisture consistent. That usually spars uh, the germination of weed seeds that can lay dormant for many years that normally wouldn't germinate because of a dry summer. Because we're having so much water, these weed seeds are being germinated and growing. So if we can catch them before they go to seed, that will be something. So uh, better to keep them from doing that. As well as we have peas that have been planted here. Behind the shed, we have a volunteer Jerusalem artichoke plant beside the compost. Don't know where it came from, how it got there, and nothing but it's going to probably be a permanent fixture there unless we can actually get all tubers out of the ground. Uh, they can be invasive if you don't want them. Uh, they, they can be very invasive, so be careful where you plant them. We have peppers in a container, summer squash. As you can see, the summer squash is yellowing due to the fact of the lack uh, of a lot of moisture. So we've refertilized that. We've got yacons, sweet potatoes that are doing incredibly well, very lush and colorful dark green potatoes potatoes cocktail onions peppers this is some more summer squash and eggplant in a container that's doing very well and finally our last two beds this is all pole beans and this is a 
combination of a pepper, a tomato, a yacon, two cabbages, and six kale. So our garden is full. As things get harvested, like we did with the garlic, we put beans in behind it. Like we did with this other patch here that was garlic, we put peas in behind that. So you always want to be up on it. We do have a lot of weeding to do, but that's just a progression of uh, gardening, especially on a large scale. You're going to have more weeds than you would on a very small garden. When growing tomatoes, the number one key is to get your tomatoes up off the ground, whether caging them or other devices, that will increase your harvest by 50%. We did not do that in some of the tomatoes last year, and we saw that 50% reduction in harvest as they sat on the ground and slugs and bugs and rot occurred on them. If you don't want to buy cages, which can be expensive or cheap, you can go the Florida route weave, which is what we've done. You take fence posts on either end, yeah, preferably thicker fence posts than what we have. You can run one string, just like the side of a boxing ring, or we choose to run two strings, and then as the tomatoes grow, we can allow them to grow and, and funnel them between the strings here, and that weight of uh, the tomato will hang on the string and keep it elevated, air circulated, and that fruit off the ground. You can, you can continue to trim the base six to seven, eight inches from ground level up the stalk to keep that air circulation, that splash up from occurring. You can use any type of string you choose, synthetic or environmentally friendly string. We use a synthetic plastic string. This is called baling twine. If you go to a farm store, they come in a 20,000 foot roll. This was about 30 bucks, and most likely you're not ever going to use all of this. They come in a variety of different colors. This is a plastic orange. They come in yellow. The cloth or the natural fiber is a green to a, a tan color as well. But we chose to do this. Uh, it doesn't break down. We can take these strings or these fence posts apart uh, and roll them up and then use them back in this particular bed next year, whether we put peas in here or pole beans or whatever the case is. So we can use it year after year. But uh, 20,000 feet goes a very long way. But this will also, you can pack a lot of tomatoes in this little bed. This is three foot by 10 foot, 30 square feet, and we have 18 tomatoes in this bed. We probably could have squeezed a few more in there, but it, the versatility of the Florida weave versus having cages here, we can cram a whole lot more and still get the same return on harvest by doing that. This here is a purple top turnip that we planted last fall and we just didn't harvest it and it's gotten very large and it's begun to put seed pods on in which we can save the seeds. Now these pods here will contain 8 to 15 seeds. Now some of them are already drying out and I've missed saving the seeds on some of them but what I'll do is you can take a bag or I'm just using a coffee can here and just scraping them in to the container here and then once I get enough of them or I can go through here and find all of them uh, you can just snap off the actual pod and then you can go through and find I got another one here just pull them off into there and then you'll see your seeds in there and you got a lot of chaff which is chaff is the shell or the casing of the pod and you can just work on getting that sorted out and then you've got good seeds and there's going to be some mature seeds, some immature seeds, but you do want to kind of catch this a little on the early side because if you get allow this to go to seed and you don't catch them all, you're going to have little turnips coming up all over the place, which is not a terrible thing if you like turnips, but there's a way that you can save seeds. So you can save seeds on your own property. Now, now, again, not all of these seeds are going to be viable. Just like when you buy them from a seed company, not all the seeds, not 100% germination all the time. But you can sort through these, get the chaffed out, and by saving the seeds, you're saving money. You can grow more of what you like, and you don't have to spend money on extra seeds. Again, if you don't do this in the appropriate time, these are all going to drop in the ground. You're going to have uh, turnip or radish seeds or whatever the case is all over the place so be cautious of it but saving seeds easy to do no matter what fruit or vegetable you're saving them from. For more information please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com